Thomas Edison is one of the most prominent inventors of the 20th century. He received 1,093 patents for his inventions, which is a record number of patents for a single person. It is widely believed that he invented the light bulb, but he was the first one to invent the light bulb. His role is he invested in the light bulb, which can be used in homes, and he commercialized the light bulb. His other role was that he was the one who set up the electricity in the US. His company General Electric is the largest power company with $74 billion in revenue, and it employs over 168,000 employees. Many legends like Henry Ford and Nikola Tesla worked for Thomas Edison. Many believe Hollywood gained popularity due to Thomas Edison before the Los Angeles movie industry was based in New York City. Thomas Edison invented kinetoscope and motion picture cameras. Edison did not sell the cameras, he just rented so anyone wants to shoot a movie, he has to rent one from Edison. This way, Thomas Edison built a monopoly in the movie industry. Edison gathered all the big movie companies of the country like Biograph, Vitagraph, American Mutoscope and any others and told them that he will control the movie industry as he holds the first patent on a motion picture camera and film system. This resulted in 23 infringement suits, as the movie producers did not have many resources as Edison had. They flew far away to a place called Hollywood, and in this way, movie industry was moved from New York City to Hollywood, California. Want to know how Thomas Edison built a monopoly in many things like electric, movie industries? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Thomas Edison was born on February 11, 1847. His parents were Sam Edison and Nancy Elliott, and he had six siblings. The family lived in Milan, Ohio when Thomas was born, but they later moved to Port Huron, Michigan. Sam Edison worked in the lumber industry. Edison went to school at Port Huron, but he did poorly there. Born with poor health, but a generally inquisitive and curious mind, the young Edison found it hard to concentrate in school. He was a poor student and didn't relate well with his teacher. One day, a schoolmaster called him adult. His mother was furious and she removed him from the school. From then, she tutored him from home. Thomas learned to read, write, and count from his mother. He would go on to credit her for making him who he was. Once he was competent enough to read, Edison developed a strong appetite for learning, often devouring volumes of books at the library. He gained most of his education from reading books. As a young boy, Edison was already interested in mechanics and chemistry. At age 10, he loved doing experiments, particularly those centered around telegraphy and electromagnetism. He even made a telegraph model and was practicing Morse code by age 11. Edison was shy and a loner. He was, however, mischievous and difficult. This mischief made it difficult for him to hold work positions. Edison started working young. He already was not going to school and he realized he needed money to fund his experiments. At age 12, he started selling newspapers and snacks to passengers on the Grand Trunk Railway. After a while, he added fruits and vegetables to his list of products. He spent all day working at the station, often leaving home in the morning and returning at night. By age 13, he was making a $50 profit weekly, a tidy sum at the time. Most of the money went into buying electrical and chemical equipment for experimentation. Edison set up a small laboratory at the baggage car of a train and would often do experiments there. One day, he caused an accidental fire and a conductor boxed him up. He stopped experimenting on the train then. Another misfortune struck when Edison lost his hearing afterward, likely because of the after-effects of scarlet fever and repetitive ear infections. He became totally deaf in one ear and partially deaf in another. While this disability made things challenging for him, he later said it helped him focus on his work since he was no longer easily distracted by surrounding noise. Edison later set up his own publication, The Grand Trunk Herald. He had a flair for publications with gripping headlines as it was during the US Civil War, and he had realized that provocative, battle-related headlines got more sales. He eventually transitioned his paper into a gossip mill called Paul Pry, but closed it when a story offended someone and he was thrown into the St. Clair River. 
In 1862, at age 15, Edison saved a three-year-old boy from a train accident. Grateful, the child's father offered to teach Edison telegraphy. Edison acquiesced. Edison learned telegraphy and then became a telegraph operator. He got his first job as a telegraph operator that year. However, he never stopped experimenting and even took up learning qualitative analysis. Edison worked the night shift so he could experiment during the day. Because he was often tired, he would take catnaps at work at night. He even built an automatic transmission device to indicate he was awake at work when he was actually asleep. He, however, left his job after almost causing a train accident because he was not alert. From 1863 to 1867, Edison worked as a telegraph operator in various cities across the United States. In 1869, Edison quit working as a telegraph operator and decided to become a full-time inventor. He filed for his first patent that year and it was approved on June 1, 1869. It was for an electric vote recorder he thought he could sell to the US Congress. Sadly, politicians were never interested in his device. Later that year, Edison partnered with Franklin Pope and James Ashley to start Pope Edison & Company, a firm for electrical engineers. The company made a lot of enhancements to the telegraph, filing several related patents. From 1870 to 1875, Edison worked in Newark, New Jersey, developing telegraph products to market leader Western Union Telegraph Company and its competitors. He also established Newark Telegraph Works. In 1874, Edison started building a multiplex telegraphic system that could send two messages at a time. He was successful and sold the device for an impressive $10,000. In 1876, Edison opened a laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey. It was the first invention factory of its kind in the country. In 1877, Edison gained fame with the invention of the phonograph. The machine could capture sound and relay it back in words. The machine recorded on tinfoil, a round a grooved cylinder, so had poor sound quality but it was still a big leap at the time, and Edison ended up presenting his device before U.S. President Hayes. Despite the recognition the phonograph earned him, Edison did not dwell on it much. In 1878, he began working on electrical illumination. He founded the Edison Electric Light Company in 1878. Building on earlier light bulb inventions, he set out to develop a long-lasting incandescent light bulb. He experimented with thousands of materials to find the best filament for his bulbs. In November 1879, he got a patent for a carbon filament connected to platina wires and on December 31, 1879, made the first public demonstration of his incandescent bulbs. The display was a rousing success. Edison was contracted to install the bulbs in a steamer owned by the Oregon Railroad and Navigation Company. He then incorporated Edison Illuminating Company in December 1880 and started lighting up streets in Lower Manhattan. In 1882, he had lit 400 bulbs. By 1883, he had lit 10,300 lamps for 513 customers. His bulbs were displayed in Paris in 1881 and London in 1882, leading to the creation of more companies to sell the bulbs in European countries. Edison's success attracted competitors, most prominently George Westinghouse. Edison was a proponent of direct current DC to transmit electricity from generating stations to end users, but Westinghouse favored alternating current AC. DC could only distribute power to buildings close to generating stations, while AC could distribute to further distances. However, the higher voltage it used created transmission risks. Edison ran campaigns against AC, calling it dangerous, while Westinghouse, Nikola Tesla, and other proponents of AC dismissed DC as unscalable and impractical. Additional inventions in the 1880s made AC safer, and by 1889, AC was the dominant means of distrusting current. Edison, however, remained reluctant to embrace AC. Shareholders at Edison General Electric Company, including financier John Pierpont Morgan, engineered the company's merger with Thomson Houston in 1892, removing Edison from the business. The new company became General Electric Company. Edison had received enormous success in electricity, 
but was now out of the industry. Fortunately, he had put up a bigger laboratory in West Orange, New Jersey. He went back to experimenting. Over the 1890s, he made several improvements to the phonograph. In 1896, he started the National Phonograph Company to make phonographs for home use. The business ran on until the invention of the radio in the 1920s took away its market. In the 1890s, Edison also played a big role in the development of the telephone. In 1886, he had discovered a way to use loose contact carbon transmitters to improve the telephone microphone and transfer better signals over telephone lines. His microphone improvements, coupled with Alexander Graham Bell's receiver technology, advanced the telephone greatly. Edison formed the Edison Ore Mining Company in 1881 to find a better way to extract metals from ore. This venture was unsuccessful. In 1899, Edison formed the Edison Portland Cement Company to promote cement for construction. Unfortunately, Edison was too early with his company as cement then was too expensive to work with. In 1891, Edison received a patent for a kinetoscope, which was a peephole viewer for motion pictures. He put it up in arcades where people used it to view short films. The kinetoscope was sold in North America and Europe throughout the 1890s. Edison even established a film studio that made close to 1,200 films. His film business expanded in the 1900s, and Edison launched the Motion Picture Patents Company in 1909, a conglomerate of nine big film studios. Later, Edison synchronized pictures from the kinetoscope with sound from the phonograph cylinder. The technology had plenty of issues, though. Further, in 1915, U.S. courts declared Motion Picture Patents Company an unfair monopoly. Edison left the business in 1918. Edison had many other ventures, including rechargeable batteries for electric cars and rubber production. Sadly, his health deteriorated in the 1920s and he stayed at home more. He died in 1931 from complications related to diabetes. By then, he had filed a record 1,093 patents, including 389 relating to electric power and 195 for the phonograph. He had also received an honorary PhD from Union College and won several awards from institutions like the American Association of Engineering Societies, the Franklin Institute, and the Philadelphia City Council. Thomas Edison was born to an affluent family. His family gave him a very good education. At the start, his school due to his hearing problems did not take him, his mother homeschooled him, his hearing problems later became a strength as he was not able to hear his surroundings. And during work, when you don't hear sounds, you are less likely to be distracted. Thomas Edison also had business acumen. He was an example when science and business were combined and it became the lethal combination where he became one of the most well-known inventors of today's world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.